Well, I want to broaden the discussion out and bring in Gurpeet Gill, Goldman Sachs Asset Manager, Global Fixed Income Macro Strategist. And uh, let's talk about the reflation trade here. You just heard my comments about the bond market. Uh, what are you seeing develop? Yeah, what's interesting is this past week, um, or this in recent weeks, in fact, you've seen sovereign bond yields moderate in the US. You've seen the US break even inflation rate. Um, so market-based inflation expectations also moderate. Meanwhile, equity markets are still robust. Credit spreads are well behaved. Um, we think that all of that tells us that the market is starting to believe the Fed on three things. So first of all, they're starting to believe the Fed when they say that a lot of this recent uptick that we've seen in inflation data just yesterday with US CPI is due to transitory factors. Secondly, they're starting to believe the Fed is committed to its flexible average inflation targeting framework. Um, but thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, they're also trusting that the Fed is committed to its price stability mandate and, and therefore would begin to act if it did see inflation was moving meaningfully higher on a sustained basis. Gurpreet, that seems to um, sort of explain the, the relative shrug that we got to that CPI data yesterday, if we're looking at just at the market action. Uh, looking at the bond yields, though, we have seen some big moves in the 10-year. Um, I, I wonder if, you know, right now we're looking at 1.46. I mean, what's sort of the range that you're looking at right now? Because uh, we did see it dip uh, to as low as 1.42 earlier in the session. Yeah, what I would say is that last time we spoke, we mentioned that we are going to be entering this period of high elevated macro data volatility. And that is indeed what we've seen play out. And um, we've seen volatility in labor market data, inflation data. And as a result of that, there is scope and potential for um, US Treasury yields to remain volatile. Um, but the current range we think um, may persist in terms of the range bound moves that we've seen. Um, and that's because heading into the summer, as I just mentioned, it may be the case that the market has got on board with the Fed narrative. Um, and of course, we've got the FOMC meeting next week, and so we'll have to wait and see what comes off that. Yeah, we're all going to be tuned into that at Yahoo Finance here. Just kind of building on the bond rhetoric, uh, we saw the 10-year T-note yield uh, fall off, uh, not a clip today or this week, but come down about 12, 15 basis points. And that's after talks in the infrastructure deal on those talks kind of falling apart at least a little bit, losing some steam. I'm wondering how you see the infrastructure push affecting long-term yields if it's able to go forward or if it hits a number, uh, another stumbling block. Yeah, that's a great point, um, because when it comes to the inflation narrative, we agree with the Fed that in the near term, a lot of that impulse is driven by transitory factors. But over the medium to long term, um, we would say that there are inflation risks out there. And one of those is this combined monetary and fiscal easing. And so we think that the policy environment is going to remain more accommodative for any given set of economic conditions into the future. And so whilst that may mean that in the near term, sovereign bond yields in the US are range bound and relatively stable, over the long term, they could trend higher than where they were in the last expansion. So the concept of the neutral rate where the policy rate will settle may actually be higher. And, and when it comes to monitoring the inflation environment and those structural factors, when we take into consideration potential for a looser fiscal stance and a more accommodative monetary stance in the next cycle, we do think that the US could come out of this pandemic on a higher inflation path. So moving from 1.8, 1.9% pre-pandemic to say 2.1, 2.3%. And that in turn would feed into higher yields in the bond market relative to the last cycle. But that's a medium to long-term view. Um, I would say at mm. this juncture, there's still a lot of uncertainty and we have to be open-minded as the recovery in the data unfolds. Gurpree, we've had a number of guests on who've pointed to the sharp rebound they've seen uh, over in Europe as uh, a case for investing in European equities. But it sounds like, based on your notes, you're a little more skeptical about how sustained this recovery is likely to be uh, when you look across the continent. Um, what specifically concerns you right now and what do you think could derail the recovery there? 
I would say in Europe, um, we do think that the recovery is going to take hold in the coming months. We're already starting to see that in the data. You see the services PMI, for example, is firmly in expansionary territory. Um, but we would say that um, the positive stance is not uniform. Um, even though you have solid manufacturing survey data, for example, supply bottlenecks are weighing on actual output. At the same time, um, the South in Europe is very sensitive to curtailed tourism, which could continue this year again. Um, and so I would say that we're not necessarily downbeat on Europe. We do think that you are going to see solid activity data, but just like the ECB yesterday, um, we would revise higher our expectations for European growth this year. Um, just like the East European Commission, um, we think that the European economy could return to its pre-pandemic trend and level at the end of this year, but we don't see that really feeding into a higher inflation environment. And that's because Europe was already below target pre-pandemic. So this pandemic shock has been an unhelpful setback for the inflation process there. And as a result, we think that ECB monetary policy is unlikely to be um, changed from the current very dovish stance until the next half of this decade at the earliest. And, and when it comes to fixed income opportunities, we would say one market that's more interesting than Europe is the Chinese government bond market. And um, that market is bigger than Germany, France, and Spain combined. Um, and the investment case is simple. It offers a yield premium and low correlation to other asset markets. Yeah, and inflation is going to be a topic on investors' mind for many months to come, we can be sure. Gorpreet Gill, Global, uh, Goldman Sachs Asset Management, Global Fixed Income Macro Strategist, thank you for joining us.